Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beloved Community. Um, this is our third service of the year, fourth, third, and we're really excited that you are here this morning. My name is Maddie Henderson. I am the Christian chaplain in the Office of Spiritual and Religious Life here at Emory University, and we're just so excited that you're here, especially on a long weekend. So um, I hope that tomorrow you will take some time to rest to get rejuvenated for this rest of the semester ahead. We've got a great morning of worship planned today. And now I will invite you to sing with our first song. As we prepare to sing this song this morning, I just want you all to think about all the blessings that you experienced this week. Uh, just take a moment before we start, just to close your eyes and just reflect for a moment on how good it is to be here this morning, sitting next to your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your friend. We're going to sing this song together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship the holy name. Here we go, the sun. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. It's time to sing the song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Oh, here we go. Hey. Let me be singing when the evening Everybody lift your voice and let's sing. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. I worship the holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. I worship the holy name. Oh, you're rich in love and you're rich in love and your soul to anger. Your name is great and your heart is high. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to Everybody again, bless the Lord, bless the Lord of oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship this holy name, for oh, it's like never before, oh my soul, I worship this holy name. Now we're just going to say, oh, come on, oh. I 
Our first reading is from Exodus 34, verse 6. The Lord passed in front of Moses, and he proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and overflowing with loyal love and faithfulness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello again. So we're excited that everyone is here and we want you to have a chance to get to know each other. So this morning I invite you to pass the peace and to maybe meet someone new that you have never met before. Um, and so I invite you to rise at this time and greet those in this room.
Okay, good morning. Um, as everyone heads back to their place, I would ask for those who are standing to remain standing, and as those who are able to, to stand as I do the second reading for today's service. We'll be reading from Matthew 9, verses 35 and 36. Um, just follow with me on the screen. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. The word of God for the people of God. Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, so for today for um, uh, our service, uh, we let's pray together. Mm. Um, dear God, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be the glorified to you and be a blessing for everyone here today. Amen. Yes. Um, so my name is Lynn. I am one of the chaplain in residence at um, Emory, and I am a um, third year student at Candler School of Theology and um, I major in Old Testament. So I study Hebrew and um, prophet and the law. And um, sometimes my friend kind of joking that I prefer the law and punishment than grace. So I'm a pretty difficult person. Um, yeah, so today I wanna um, uh, teach you uh, some Hebrew word and then give you a pop quiz after this. No, I'm just kidding, it's Sunday. I, I, I won't give anyone any pop quiz. Um, but I wanna um, share with you um, about the characteristic of God, like in Exodus 34, that we have just read about. Um, so um, a lot of people think that the Old Testament and the New Testament are two separate books, because like the God in the Old Testament is so angry and just punish people all the time, and why um, Jesus um, in the New Testament is um, gracious and um, kind. But um, um, actually, they are still the same book, and they say, t tell the same story about the one true God. And um, um, so today, I will, um, I guess, like explain for you the character of God in the we find in Exodus 30 and 4. Um, that is actually the first time. So this passage, this is the first time like the character of God is proclaimed in the Old Testament, and later you we find it uh, throughout the Bible. Um, so the first word is uh, compassion, like uh, God is full of compassion, and in Hebrew, the word compassion is uh, grachamim, um, can, um, which is the noun, and the adjective is rachum, and the word rachamim or rachum basically means like the womb, the womb of the woman, and the word um, compassion means like basically the kind of feeling like a mother have for a child which is um, a feminine uh, characteristic, and it's very rare, because like we always have um, a masculinity associated with God. For example, we call God like God the Father. So when we look back in the Old Testament, you see this like mother characteristic used to describe God. So that, I think that is um, like a revelation, at least to me, that like God can both have like a feminine and masculinity character. Because I feel like both male and female like can um, together can like I get like demonstrate the character of God, um, and then um, so like another time we find the word like rakamim or uh, compassion in the Old Testament is in the story of Solomon, like so um, there's a famous story like when King Solomon like w was a king they have two women they fight for one child and they bring the baby uh, to him and they ask him to decide like who is the, the real mother. And he said, okay, let me cut them in, the baby in half. I give you half of it, I give you the other half. And um, at that, ha at that, in that passage, like the real mother, she feel like have rachamim, like compassion for the baby. So she said, no, I wanna give up this baby so the other woman can have it. And that's how like, he know that is the real mother because she have the compassion for that baby. And um, 
So what's interesting about the word compassion is it's not just a feeling, like that cozy and warm feeling you have in your, I get in your gut, but also it's an action. Um, so in Exodus 34, 30 and 4, we just, we just read it, like when God delivered people of Egypt, um, he take care of them going to the wilderness because he had compassion for them. So compassion is just not a feeling, but also an action you take when you care about someone. And um, um, another time in Isaiah 49, 15, God is also described as a mother, have the tenderness for the children. And even if the, the mother, the real mother can forget the children, like God will never forget his people. So in Matthew, um, the message in Matthew that we just read, um, Jesus is called the compassion of God when he saw people like they are so lost and like sheep without a shepherd, like he had compassion for them. Um, and then he take action, like he feed them, he teach them, he provide for them and he die for them. So um, I get that is the fourth word like compassion. And um, the second word like in the passage like Exodus 30, um, God is uh, gracious. And then I want to also tell you the Hebrew word for the word gracious is um, Hanun, or like uh, Khen, which is Hebrew mean like favor or take delight. Um, in Psalm 45 to um, it's described like um, it's, a, uh, it's a book about poetry, and it describes a poet that had a lip of hands. That means that, po that poet is um, like know how to speak like delightful word to please other people. So basically, can mean delightful. And then in Proverbs 1 9, um, it describes jewelry uh, as an ornament of hands. It's like a jewelry is so precious and it's beautiful, so people take delight of it. Um, so the word, I think an example of how we understand the word can is in um, the story of Esther. When uh, Queen Esther come to please with the king to like, spare her people, um, she, she asked the king that, um, can I have a request of can from you? And the king loved Esther and he delight in her, so she grant her that request of can. So basically um, the word grace or can is, is like a favor given when you take delight of someone. But also grace is something we, sometimes we receive, but we, we didn't deserve it. For example, in um, Genesis, when Jacob uh, ran away from his family, he steal his blessing from his brother Esau, and he ran away. Like 20 years later, he come back home, and he was afraid that Esau wanna come after him and get vengeance. So he like really repair, and um, but when he saw his brother, he just kneel on the on his knee, and he begged his brother that um, may I find hand in your eyes, like may I find grace in you, and his brother forgive him, embrace him, and then take him back. So grace is also mean something we do not deserve, but we still receive. And, um, but like in the whole Bible, the character that demonstrates the most grace is God. Because like for so many times, God always come back to the people of Israel, rescue them, deliver them, and provide for them, despite how many times that they walk away from God. So in Greek, the word can, um, grace is courage, which means gracious gift. And um, uh, in Ephesians 2 8, Paul writes that um, God, he reached in mercy and by his heart, like God rescue us. And in this same courage, our grace is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because of this is, um, because like by his sacrifice, we were delivered from our sin and can have access to the relationship with God. And uh, since I explained that Christ is a gift, or we need it to receive it. Like that is the, the essential message of the, of the gospel. You don't need to do anything to earn God's grace. You just need to receive it because it is a gift. Um, so in conclusion, like, at least I teach you today the like, two characters of God. We have three more. So if next year like, she, I got invited again, I will teach you the rest of it. So, um, yeah, but like, um, I think the character of God, like we can apply or demonstrate that in our Christian life. Um, because like, if we know where we're coming from, 
then we can we know where we're going. So I think it's important that we understand the Old Testament and the character of God and how God um, demonstrate God's love to us in the Old Testament. Then you can understand the significance when God in the human flesh come and rescue us. Yes. So um, this is uh, my message for today. Amen. So this morning, we're going to do something just a tad different with our reflection. And what we're going to do, I want everybody to take your phones out. This is one time that you have a license to use it in service, OK? Uh, Demacy Akinpelu is going to play our reflection for us this morning. But while he's playing, he's playing the hymn, uh, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. I want you all to go as if you're going to send a text message. Um, and I want you to type or type in something about the character of God as it relates to you. Something that you can reflect upon this morning. It might not be uh, what Lynn covered in her message this morning. It may be something else. But just something that we can share. Now here's the fun part, because he's going to play like three verses in a couple of choruses, right? I want you to come up to me and just show it to me, and I'm going to tell it, OK? I'm going to audibleize what you wrote. If you don't want to write it, just come tell me in my ear, and I'll speak it for you. Is that good? Is that okay for everybody? If you, if you don't feel comfortable coming, that's okay. But we're just asking. We're just trying to really focus on the character of God today. Amen? Damacy? And you may begin. all-knowing all-forgiving Consistent. Merciful justice. All knowing. Loves when we don't think we deserve love. Acceptance. Loving unconditionally. God is patient with me. He extends his hands to me time and time again. He's the shelter. Savior. Interested in parts of me that I did not know existed. Amen. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen.
Our third reading today is called Not Pity But Compassion by Howard Thurman. God is at work enlarging the boundaries of my heart. God is making room in my heart for compassion. There is already a vast abundance of room for pity. It is often easy to be overcome with self-pity, that sticky substance that ruins everything it touches. My list of excuses is a long list, and even as I say it, I know that under closest scrutiny, they disappear one by one. There is pity in me, pity for others, but there is something in it that cannot be trusted. It is mixed with pride, arrogance, cunning. I see this only when I expose myself to the eyes of God in the quiet time. It is now that I see what my pity really is and the sources from which it springs. God is making room in my heart for compassion. The awareness that where my life begins is where your life begins. The awareness that the sensitiveness to your needs cannot be separated from the sensitiveness to my needs. The awareness that the joys of my heart are never mine alone nor are my sorrows. I struggle against the work of God in my heart. I want to be let alone. I want my boundaries to remain fixed that I may be at rest. But even now, as I turn to him in the quietness, his work is in me is ever the same. God is at work enlarging the boundaries of my heart. everyone. I invite you now to join me in the prayers of the people. This is a call and response, so when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you respond with, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, how blessed we are to have the chance to know you. To hear the words of the Bible read out loud today, proclaiming your goodness and your compassion. What a privilege to know what it feels like to be loved by you. We pray that we never forget that love, Lord. Let it be the foundation of everything we do and everything we are, always anchoring us, guiding us home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It's hard sometimes to speak to you. It can be intimidating to bow our heads in vulnerability, spilling our brightest hopes and deepest worries to a God with indescribable glory. But we have been reminded today that above all else, you are a compassionate God, an understanding God. You are faithful to us even when we forget to praise your name. You are loving and forgiving even in our darkest moments. We pray to remember this about you always so that we may grow ever closer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray to be like you. We pray to be like your son, Jesus Christ, who is everything you stand for in human form. Let us be kind and merciful and compassionate. Let us breathe with the righteousness and grace of God. And let us lend our strength in our prayers to those who need it most. We pray for any friends or family members we know to be struggling this week. We pray for all those affected by the path of Hurricane Ida. And we ask that our country rally behind those who have lost homes and loved ones. We pray for the people of Afghanistan as they weather a war-torn nation and we ask that those who have fled find safe refuge here. And we pray for the subsiding of this pandemic, 
for every full capacity ICU and overflowing waiting room, for every doctor or nurse who is growing tired after being on the front lines for so long. May all these people find peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer out loud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry for the recording, I messed you up. We have some rhythmic instruments that we're going to use on this. That's right. The rest of y'all have your hands, and some of you have your fingers, right? So we're going to make this a, a community effort. Come on, I need all my percussionists to come up. I'm sorry. To start that recording one more time. Here we go. I think this was better. Hello. Hello. Okay. No, no, it's good. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. The splendor of a king Close in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And tremble at his voice Tremble at his voice How great is our God Oh sing with me How great is our God And all oh, will see How great How great Is our God Name above all names Worthy of our praise My heart will sing how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. One more time. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, see how great, how great is 
Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for that. Um, so um, I just have a few announcements for us this morning. The first that I want to say is that just remember that on September 26th, so it's in a few weeks, we will not be here for worship. We will be worshiping at Glen Memorial UMC that day, which is the church on the corner of Emory's campus for Glen Emory Sunday. So if you want to participate and, and join with us in that service, we will be there. So we'll still be gathering as a community. We'll just be over at Glen Memorial. Um, next Sunday's preacher is Reverend, <coughs> excuse me, Reverend George Ham, who is the RUF campus minister. So um, I hope you will join us to hear his sermon. And if you would scan this QR code, if for some reason it doesn't work, it should go to the hub. So if you have the hub, you can let us know that you're here this morning. It helps us, you know, kind of know who's here and you have the chance to let us know if you'd like to participate in worship. So if you would like to do a reading or greet people or sing, we would love to know that. And so if you can um, just fill out that short form, that would be great. Um, does anyone else have announcements for the good of the group? Anyone? Yes, yes. Um, so after, after every worship service, we gathered downstairs in Brooks Commons. However, I'm sure all of you in the Emory community saw on Friday that we moved, was that Friday? Thursday. We moved to a yellow status, operating status, so that means we're going to have to eat outside. So we do have our box lunches, so there's some seats outside either way of Brooks Commons, and I invite you to, um, to join us downstairs for lunch after this. So, And Voices will continue rehearsing on Fridays in Whitehall 101 at 6. So join voices if you'd like. Um, and I invite you to join us for our last song. your voice and say this chorus with us. Here we go. Amen. 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 Um, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power may be to our God forever. Amen. Thank you. We're going to sing the last part of that together. Here we go. Everybody lift your voices now. Here we go. Oh,
more time with me. Say amen. 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 Thank you. Thank y'all for coming. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.